What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Unconventional Money Moves Podcast. I got Jake with a K, Caramel, with us today, a man of many talents. I found him on Instagram, Connor. Thanks for connecting us. And Jake does a lot of cool tattoo art. And I felt like that was super unconventional. And Jake does a lot of different things that he didn't tell me about, which are also unconventional. So happy to have Jake on and how he has carved out taking an unconventional approach when it comes to building wealth, which I don't ever remember going to school and anyone saying like, hey, you want to be a tattoo artist one day. And it's funny to me because I used to watch like, uh, what what's that reality show like Ink or something? Um, There's like some tattoo show. It's like a reality show. It's like a contest or something. Yeah, Ink Master. Yeah, Ink Master. And I was like, man, these people are so talented. And a lot of them are super successful because they have their own like shops and they have all of their own clients and everything. So definitely happy to have Jake on. And how did you get into being a tattoo artist initially? And how was that? You know, I'm sure like people didn't think like being a tattoo artist, you could be successful, but ultimately you have become pretty successful compared to most people. Uh, so, and I guess, I guess take you all the way back to the beginning. I mean, my first time in a tattoo shop, uh, I went with a friend, they were getting a piercing. Uh, it was like instant. The second I walked in, it was like the atmosphere. It felt like everybody was like, everybody was being creative. Everybody was having, you know, fun. Like it seemed like, I don't know, just everything about that day resonated with me. And it, it kind of just, I don't know if I knew that necessarily then, but it kind of stuck in the back of my head, at least that that's what I wanted to do. Um, fast forward a couple years later, a few of my friends had gotten tattoo machines and were just, you know, destroying their friends lives <laughs> <laughs> so i decided to give it a try too and i destroyed a couple of my friends lives you know like put some really bad tattoos on them um shout out to them for still rocking some of those bad tattoos uh it started there you know i started tattooing my friends just for fun you know i didn't charge anybody but i mean definitely wasn't the safest environment <laughs> yeah I, I, I did I did want to become like a professional though. Like I had aspirations to like, you know, not stay, you know, doing it unprofessionally. So I did try to seek out an apprenticeship in my hometown. Unfortunately in my hometown, it was watered down. Like it was, they were basically like churches, you know, there's one on every corner almost. So it's very highly competitive. You know, people are very cutthroat there. Um, it's also just the city itself. So it didn't really help that. Like there was just no support for that, you know? Um, so I didn't actually get an apprenticeship in my home state. Every, uh, every shop I went to was basically like, nah, you know, you're not good enough. Um, you'll never make it in this industry, you know, amongst some other really mean things, you know, to put it light. But that, uh, that didn't, that didn't push me away. Honestly, that just kind of fueled the fire. So I, you know, I looked for, anywhere I could find an opportunity. And it just happened to be in Texas in the middle of nowhere, West Texas, which I didn't know it was the middle of nowhere until I got there until I showed up on a bus with $200 in my pocket. Um, and that's where I ended up meeting my mentor, Dwayne Dahl. And now, you know, he, he took me under his wing and he taught me a lot. And, you know, that was basically the beginning for me. So how I got it. So like were, I, you, I would, were you like into art before this, you know, you got this itch to be a tattoo artist or were you literally just like starting from scratch? I would say I've always been creative. Mm -hmm. um, I, I loved art. I really didn't take it serious in school, but like I would, you know, I would doodle stuff. I mainly I would draw like uh, like graffiti art. Like I really liked like lettering and stuff like that. So I did, I just never really took it serious it was more just like a, a hobby it was i wasn't until i actually started tattooing that i really put the time and dedication into learning art and tattooing yeah because being able to draw something is hard versus being able to draw something on someone's body is a completely different animal what does like what does a tattoo artist apprenticeship look like it, I mean, dude, that's the question, right? Everybody's is different, you know? I mean, there's a huge spectrum of like, you know, someone comes in and just gets handed a tattoo machine and basically you just get started and 
get thrown to the wolves versus, you know, the hardest apprenticeships out there where you're like scrubbing the floor with a toothbrush and being duct taped to chairs and thrown down the hallway and, you know, being pranked and all. I mean, it's, it's a wide spectrum. Everybody has a different apprenticeship. I feel like mine was kind of like smack in the middle. Um, like right in between chaos and like actual like study. Um, the, the, the length of time changes too. Like some people could be apprenticing for six months, which I don't agree with to like two years, you know, it really just depends. Everybody's apprenticeship is different. It's a different story for everybody. Everybody gets their start differently. Yeah. And I feel like the middle is good because you don't want the person who's just like a drill sergeant yelling at you with no end in sight, someone who's able to push you when you need to be pushed but also is able to pull you when you need to be pulled and know that you are valued. You are a part of the team. It's going to be work because you're just starting out. You have no experience. You have no money. You have no clients. All you have is your hard work and your determination in order to start to carve out this new business venture essentially for you and becoming one of the leading figures in the space, which I know you've done super well on social media and I've seen your work. I mean, it's a work of art and being able to do it on someone's skin. That's a, a talent very few people have. Yeah, it's definitely, um, it's, it's an occupation that I say isn't for everybody. And the apprenticeship, in my opinion, is supposed to figure that out. And sometimes even like the drill sergeant, sergeant route is needed, you know, like I still think that there are there is a time and a place for like harsh critique and like really taking it serious because it is serious. Like you got someone's skin permanently in your hand. So it is very serious. Um, as much as I joke around, like on the internet, you know, I take things pretty, pretty serious, like in my actual work, you know? Um, so social media is kind of like, I get to be the opposite. Like I get to kind of turn that business side off. Like once I take, you know, the sunglasses off, it's like, this is business time, you know, like, you know, and then, you know, the characters, me just ha having fun and not being so, you know, have to be so professional and I can kind of show it in more of a funny light. So there's, there's a balance. There's, there's a good mix. Yeah. I was watching one of your most recent videos where the person like hands you a tattoo. You're like, this is what I want. And you're like, you just want me to copy someone else's tattoo. You don't want me to make it unique to you. And the person's like, no, this is what I want. So being a creative person and I'm creative as well. And sometimes you feel like, why would you want to just copy someone else's tattoo? At the same time, though, you are running a business. And if that's what someone want, wants, you're like, that's what you want. That's what I'll give you. But from the creative side, it kind of icks you a little bit because you're like, oh, man, I can make this tattoo look so much better. Even, But the person's not open to it. And that could be tough. So, yeah, that's a, that's a good example. Um, I feel like a lot of people, especially newer people that are getting tattooed have some have a common misconception of, you know, I see something. So I want it exactly that way. So their first instinct is like, okay, I like this a lot. I want it exactly like this, but they don't realize like that kind of takes the artist part out of tattoo artist. You know what I mean? Like we are there, it's our job to, you know, make something unique for you and, and something different, but not everybody understands that. So that video is a good example of like, in my and what I do with that is like, I feel like using social media to kind of be informative to maybe some of the newer generation of clients who are going to be lifelong clients and kind of give them little pieces of information and something that's digestible through a little bit of humor. So that way, you know, somebody sees this video, they can laugh at it, but they can also know like, okay, when I go into a shop, I'm going to understand that I want my artist to have a little bit of freedom and I don't want them to just take somebody else's tattoo. So that just that video is a good example of what I, I'm trying to do is educate and also, you know, get a few laughs, maybe make someone's day. Yeah. I remember watching like the last dance and they were saying, you don't put a, you don't put a saddle on a Mustang. You let the Mustang just do its thing. And that's what you are as a, an artist is if you put like, put you in a box, it feels, it feels wrong. It's like, ugh, like, let me just do it. Like, listen, I know what you want. You're coming to me. You trust me. We have the rapport. Let me just do my thing. I promise you're going to like it. You got to just let me do my thing. Because ultimately, that's where you're going to shine the most is by allowing you to do what you want to do 
But if I come to you with a tattoo idea, how many tattoos do you think you've done? Thousands? A Tens lot. of thousands? Tens of thousands, maybe. I have no tattoos. So I'm coming to you as the subject matter expert, knowing what you know, giving people these bad tattoos when you first started out, and being able to transform and evolve into the artist that you've become by me giving you the idea and then you taking that idea and having a even better idea than what I could come up with on my own. And the problem is too, you know, uh, we get kind of put it at somewhat of a deficit because say you get a client that may have done that with another artist, right. And trusted somebody to do that. And it doesn't come out the way they want. So they're less likely to give any trust. They're like, I have a better chance if I just, make somebody copy this exactly because it's a lot harder to miss if that makes sense. Totally. Because past performance in the investment world doesn't guarantee future results. Just because you had one bad relationship, one bad experience with another person, you have to put that aside because this is a whole new relationship. It's independent. And this person is now coming to you for this tattoo. It's like, Hey, whoever you worked with before, like you spent 200 bucks on this tattoo you know, you're coming to you. I mean, a tattoo is probably going to cost a few thousand bucks or something that's intricate at the very least. If I'm going to get brain surgery, I don't want a first year medical student. I want someone who's done thousands of brain surgeries and it's probably going to cost me a lot more money. No, I agree. And, and uh, the, the problem is, is it comes down to the research, you know, like, and even with research, you don't always get the results you want. It's it's more of a process. So like if you take pride in the process of finding the right artist, you're going to have a better chance of getting a better product. If you're just like, I'm just going to get tattooed by any regular Joe up the street, you know, because I want it to maybe be a little bit cheaper. You know, I don't necessarily want someone to take too much creativity or a lot, you know, extra, you know, detail into it because I have a specific budget. They're afraid, you know, if somebody's really good that they're not going to want to do one of those smaller tattoos. You know, so there's a lot of factors, there's a lot of factors that can go wrong before you even get to the shop. But I, I think that with the research and even after the research, going and talking to the artist is very important because, yes, you might like my work. And this is that th this is a maybe an uh, unpopular opinion, but you could like my work, but you could not like me and I could not like you. And here's the thing. If you don't like me and I don't like you, how are we going to creatively come together to give you exactly what you want? right and there's nothing wrong with that it's just like relationships when you date somebody or you have a friendship like not every friendship is going to be for you not every relationship is going to be for you but if you if you take the time to really look and like research and ask and like talk to the person you're going to have a better result and you're going to have a better experience too and i think that's super important so that's why you know i, I tell that when i'm tattooing people and i also preach that when i make my videos as goofy as they are and as goofy as they come across like the point is you know, do your research, find somebody who makes you feel comfortable. If you're going to be spending money on somebody, give it to somebody that you enjoy and you want to see do well and you want to support and, you know, you enjoy your time together and it's a lot of fun. And it's not this weird, like, like exchange of like, be quiet, sit still, give me your money. Goodbye. You know, uh, that's what I'm kind of working towards is to change that. And I feel like I haven't necessarily done it, but I've played a good helping hand in it. Totally spot on because I could come to you with a, hey, Jake, I just want a small tattoo. However, just like you are in your profession, business, relationships, that small tattoo could transform into something that takes up my whole arm. So knowing like having that conversation some with someone like, you know, this is your first tattoo. You know, you want to get it here because if you want to get more, you want to make sure that the flow of the art is on the arm. Like, could you explain that to me a little bit more? I mean, I don't know anything about this. I'm just thinking like if I was a tattoo artist, what I would want to talk to someone about. No, that's actually a good point. And, and it's funny you say that because that's a point a lot of people miss. Uh, and I, I myself have missed, you know, as a, uh, as a client getting tattooed before I, I ever tattooed myself, like did tattoos. You usually have two routes. In my opinion, a client comes in, they want to get a tattoo. There's clients who are going to get maybe one tattoo every couple of years or every couple of months. There's going to be a long span between. They're probably not looking to fill their body up. 
Then there's the clients who, you know, they see people in tattoo magazines. They see all these models with like really clean, nice, full body suits or like full sleeves, full legs, whatever. And they want to get big work and they want to have it look cohesive like you're talking about. Some people get lost in translation where they start off with that small tattoo, but then decide later on, oh, I want to actually do a sleeve. But then the placement of that tattoo previously now kind of like disrupts a little bit of the flow for the longevity of the project, as opposed to if they gave me a full free arm, we talked about it, they're like, I do want to fill this arm completely. The placement's going to be different now than your regular client that comes in and is, you're not going to see them very often. They don't want a full sleeve. They just want a couple tattoos on their arm or like, you know, one here, one there, you know, um, it really just depends. And, and communication is everything. Before you even get to the tattoo, communication is what's going to give you the product, you know, like that preparation beforehand. Like if there's no miscommunication between me, you and the art, the product, you're going to be happy with it. And I'm going to be happy with it because at the end of the day, you need to be happy with it, but I'm not even going to show it to you unless it's something that I would wear myself. So if I'm coming in for my first tattoo, other than my face, where's the worst place to get like your first tattoo? If you want to expand on your vision to create more of a full body piece, such as a sleeve. Um, I mean, there's many areas. I mean, I, it most people that come in for their first tattoo and pick a painful spot is usually the ribs for whatever reason that's just like the go-to and it goes two ways once again you either get your people who it is incredibly painful and it makes the experience ridiculous and it's like you know they're they, they're not they're moving they're taking breaks and it takes longer to get done and there's it's a whole headache or you get the people that sit and it doesn't bother them at all. It's kind of like a shoot shot in the dark. You don't know what you're going to get until you start tattooing. You know what I mean? But if, if, if you're asking me what the most painful place to get is the first tattoo, I would probably say ribs. Cause that's the first thing people jump to when it comes to a painful spot or like right in the middle of the chest. I feel like those selective spots that are really painful, like let's say the palms, that's like a top 10. No, not many people are going to come in and just get their palms tattooed. You know what I mean? Especially for a first tattoo. Back of the knees, you know, one of the worst places you can get tattooed. I feel like most people for their first tattoo aren't going to come in and be like, oh, I want a banger in the back of my knees. So that being said, it's probably the ribs. So where would you recommend someone get their first tattoo? You know, most my, my rule of thumb is um interior hurts and exterior safe so like for example if you go to like the inside of the arm it starts to get more painful as opposed to like the outside of the arm so anything on the outside you can start with that so i say like if you're getting your first one start up here you know that's on the outside it's not too painful it's a good easy starter or if you want to go balls to the wall you know get your shins done and then you know <laughs> I always say too, like if you're going to get tattooed, start with a painful spot, because if you start with a painful spot, such as the ribs, and you go to the outside of your arm, it's going to be nothing. You're going to sit like a breeze. If you sat through your first tattoo on the ribs, a lot of other tattoos for you are probably going to be a lot easier. That makes sense. Do you know why the interior is more painful? Is it because it's closer to the bone or there's more nerves there? The skin, it doesn't really see the light of day. It doesn't really get touched much. Like, and you can kind of pinch around too. Like if you pinch like the top of your forearm versus the inside of your arm, like up near like kind of the armpit. So go up near the armpit a little bit. Like, right. Oh, yeah. There. That's what I'm saying. It's like it, tighter. It's tighter. There's thinner skin. It, it's just softer. Like it's a little bit more baby skin. Like if I throw a rock at you, right. And I hit you on the outside of the arm, it's going to hurt. But if I throw a rock at you and it wails you right on the inside of the thigh, you're going to feel that for weeks. You know what I mean? It's just like where the skin lays, how thick it is, how much fatty, you know, tissue and meat is everywhere. Like, but those insides, those insides will get you like the inside of the thigh. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I've thought about getting a tattoo, but just, I can't sit for very long. I'm very... ADHD. I was like, I don't think I could sit there for very long. Uh, my wife has like a bunch of tattoos. So she has the tattoos. I don't. So 
opposites attract, well, as they say. Surprised. I have a lot of clients that have ADHD. Like some of my best clients do, you know. And a lot of the time, Judy, there's there's so much more than just sitting there. Like we're talking a lot of shit. We're watching funny videos. Sometimes we'll watch movies, especially if we're like themed. Like if we're doing a theme sleep of like Freddy Krueger, we're gonna watch the Freddy movies and like, you know, we're gonna get junk food and talk shit the whole time. Like I mean, it's a whole experience. Not everybody's like that. With me, though, I like to give a full experience. I like worked in the restaurant business for many years before I tattooed. So like giving the customer an experience to me is still incredibly important. That's very interesting because people from the outside looking in, they see someone with a bunch of tattoos. Maybe they have face tattoos. Maybe they have a grill in their mouth and you just look at someone like, oh, you know, who's this bum on the street? But nowadays you start to look at people that are more mainstream that people may know, such as like Post Malone and Jelly Roll. And I remember watching a documentary about Little Peep. And he's like, I got this face tat because I don't want to ever have a conventional job. And there's nothing wrong with having tattoos. But obviously people on the outside looking in could, you know, people are judgy. Like, let's just be real here. Uh, But ultimately, it seems like you're creating a like a four seasons experience. Like you're going to figure out like, what's the, what's the purpose of this tattoo? What's the inspiration? And then create this whole experience so that when I want to get my second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth tattoo, I'm not going to think of anyone except Jake. And that right there, in my opinion, for any other tattooers listening, that's your key. That is your key because Here's the thing, dude. You could do a bunch of tattoos on people and and act like you're high and mighty and you're this fucking rock star. But if you're pissing those people off, dude, there's a hundred other artists that are much nicer, that are a little bit cheaper, that do better work than you. And you need to humble yourself, my dude. And I know that sounds funny coming from the social media guy, but like I said, that's a character. Like the person me, Jake, you know, I don't feel a lot of the ways that I might like joke around, you know, it's a joke. It's, it's, it's comedy, you know, but to me, it's, it's serious, you know, um, taking your client interaction is like everything, like your experience that you give them because you want them to come back. You want them to only think of you. And like me personally, I clients get tattooed by other people that are collectors. It doesn't bother me. But that is the goal. Like if you want to stay consistent in the business, it's going to be through giving your clients not only a great tattoo, but a great experience. Yeah, being that you've created this uh, playful character on social media, how has that transformed your business since I think you've done pretty well on like TikTok and Instagram, like hundreds of thousands of followers? I mean, honestly, dude, like... um, it was an accident in a weird way. It was an accident that was also like slightly on purpose. It's kind of funny how it happened. Um, I was obviously tattooing, but at the time I was training MMA, um, I wanted to fight. It was one of the ways that I also wanted to unconventionally make some money. (laughs) Shout out to the podcast. Um, And I was training five days a week. Uh, I had a coach, a personal coach that was, you know, watching the, what I ate, how often I slept, you know, we were, we we're training every day after work for the most part with two days off. And uh, he unfortunately had to get sent to Afghanistan for work. So when that happened, I went from training four or five days a week to now I just have all this extra time and all, all this extra energy. And like, that was a really good way for me to kind of like have an outlet outside of tattooing that was also still creative and fun. Um, so now I had lost that. So when I was sitting downstairs in my room, uh, watching some YouTube and I was doing my drawing for the next day, a TikTok compilation comes up and they were funny. I, I mean, they were funny videos. I was like, you know what, man, I might, I might do this. Like I'd never seen this app before, you know, not, no, none of my friends are going to see it. None of my coworkers are going to see it. None of my family is going to see it. I could just be this goofy dude and like put some of my like goofy, weird thoughts in a place and collect them. So I started doing that and one of my videos went viral and it just kind of made sense. And I decided, you know, what am I going to do with this? And I was like, I want to educate, but I also want to, I want to do some funny stuff. So I integrated, you know, some of my funny stories or like jokes or just 
anything that involved that I thought was funny or something that needed to be taken serious into video format. And I mean, it changed my business. You know, uh, I went from just being some random tattooer from bumfuck Maryland to, <laughs> you know, people in Italy know who I am. People in Germany come over to get tattooed. I, you know, I can go to any tattoo shop around the world and be welcomed. And, you know, for somebody who never used social media before that, it was a lot to happen really fast. And I had to make a lot of quick decisions some of which I'm proud of and some of which, you know, I would change if I could, but, you know, at the end of the day, I'm happy with where I'm at and I'm happy with, you know, how everything has unfolded. And now because of the internet, I'm able to dip my toes into a bunch of different other avenues and a bunch of other unconventional ways of making money. Like I DJ as well. So some Saturday nights I'll go out in Philly and I DJ with sad and bougie shout out. I love you, Sean, you the man. Um, we do, you know, basically an emo night mixed with some rap music good mix i get to dj there you know um i low-key do porn on the side we'll keep that a little hush you know what i mean with the only fans wave you know there's definitely money to be made there you know investing there's there's just so many different avenues especially with the internet because i grew up in an era when i first you know was young there was no internet to where now there's this wave of opportunity and and, and i feel like for people right now it's important for people to understand that this is the way you can set yourself up for the future the time is now and like stop letting the thoughts of everybody else and everybody else's opinions affect your back if you want to do something and it makes you happy like just do it man like i was scared don't get me wrong for people to see what i was making and stuff but i wouldn't i wouldn't change a thing if i could go back you know everything's worked out really well and i've been able to have a lot of opportunity because of it and i've been able to make some unconventional money moves as one would say that i feel like a lot of people don't have the option to so it's been great man it's been really good i'm doing really well i feel like that's so cool that you're able to have the freedom to choose what you want to do when you want to do it and to me that's the beauty of being able to be unconventional to carve out a niche for yourself and your passions because ultimately anyone can make a bunch of money. Like you can go sell cars for one or two years and make a ton of money, even if it's not your passion. But if you're able to find your passion and something you enjoy doing, and ultimately you're able to pay your bills and have a little extra money on the side, eventually over time, if you keep evolving and keep working at it, so many people nowadays just quit. <laughs> Eventually, all those people are going to quit, and then you're going to find yourself, you know, standing at the top of the mountain, such as going viral on TikTok, and now people all over the world know who Jake, Jake is, and that's who I want to give my tattoo. Well, people see the the quick jump, right? They don't see all the work that was put in, and the you know each brick laid every day perfectly. Instead of me laying ten bricks every day and sloppily throwing bricks down. To quote Will Smith, you know, it's about how you lay one brick each day. You lay it perfectly. You take the time and set it. And eventually you're going to have a really structured built wall. You know, it's, it's, it's not about the high quick climb. It's about slowly building and, you know, making smart decisions instead of hasteful decisions really quickly. Um, people want to get to the top of the mountain, but they don't want to climb it. They just want to take an elevator and there is no elevator. Like I hate to break it to anybody listening, but there is no fucking elevator, man. You're going to have to take each step every day and trying to run up. You could slip, you could fall, but take one step a day, slow pace, see the top. Don't get distracted by all the things. Don't get halfway through and then see this other half of a mountain and think you can't climb it, man. You already made it halfway. Stop giving up. If you got a product, if you got something you're making, if you got music, if you got art, if you got t-shirts you're selling, if whatever it is, you know, like day by day, one brick, you will have a wall at some point. Build that wall, folks. Well, Jake, so happy to have you on. Thanks for sharing everything that you're doing. MMA, OnlyFans, tattoo arting artistry djing so happy to have you on there's no more no perfect guest on here like jake you know doing it doing a little bit of everything being conventional so we'll see everyone next time